goodness, what a busy, busy news day, and it's only going to get busier. As ever, the papers, first of all, there's the Sunday Telegraph, they're splashing on the data breach. Very, very embarrassing for the Conservatives. Not the biggest story, perhaps, but embarrassing nonetheless. There's the Sunday Times with a fairly blistering front page. Uh, Tim Shipman, its political editor, has interviewed both Boris Johnson and Theresa May. Boris versus May. It's not Johnson versus May, and it's not Boris versus Theresa. It's Boris versus May. That tells you a lot. Now it's war. And then finally, the Mail on Sunday, perhaps surprisingly, has gone for a campaign. Save our parks. Very important that. We all want our parks to be saved. But a strange choice, perhaps, on the morning of the Conservative Party conference. We will debate that. In due course, Tom Swarbrick, you were here last year, which was a tough, <laughs> tough week for you. How was it then? Uh, well, I think for a lot of people that was their worst nightmare made flesh, <laughs> wasn't it? Uh, to, to reason no speech. Um, it's, it's funny that not a lot is remembered about what she actually said, but struggling to, to, ever to get it out quite. Was ever thus. Um, so this is an opportunity this year to, to reset that domestic agenda, uh, to, yes, talk about Brexit, but I think a lot of people are tired of talking about Brexit. They want to hear domestic policies now. But she's tough. She, comes, she absorbs yeah, the absolutely. punishment and she keeps coming back. And the Sunday Times has set up her versus Boris well, quite. Johnson. Um, a really this, big spread, yeah. This is, this is let battle commence, isn't it? Um, Tim Shipman, as you say, having interviewed both Boris and Theresa May, I think from reading them you can tell which one he enjoyed doing rather more. Uh, for Boris's part, he says that Chequers is, is deranged, no one thinks it can work, that there will be economic and political damage to the UK. Uh, he is asked about whether he's trying to topple the Prime Minister. He insists that he's simply trying to uh, be loyal. He says, I'm like a loyal and faithful Labrador that is <laughs> relentlessly returning to her an object that she has mistakenly chucked away. I have a loyal Labrador. Uh, I can tell you that sometimes the constant returning of the stick does get a bit irritating. <laughs> irritating. Um, for Theresa May's part, um, she talks a bit about domestic policy. Uh, she's asked a lot about herself, which she doesn't like talking, although we are talking about, although we are given this image of her pushing her supermarket trolley down the frozen section uh, food aisle and being accosted by members of the public. Where they agree is there needs to be more domestic policy. There needs to be a, a proper, concerted, uh, compassionate vision for the country right. after Brexit, uh, and they both trade ideas about we'll what We'll talk more be. about that in a second. Kate, there's two really interesting sets of polling, I think, today. One in the Mail on Sunday and one in the Observer. Let's talk about both. Yeah, so I think this one in the Mail on Sunday is particularly interesting because what it actually shows is that Boris Johnson might not be as popular as perhaps he thought he was. This poll says, and it's a, it's a 10,000 uh, sample size, it's quite a large poll, shows that if Boris Johnson uh, went up against Corbyn in a general election, he, he wouldn't necessarily win, but Theresa May would. And, and that's a really interesting thing for a poll to show at this point, because, of course, Boris Johnson on the front page of, of all the papers today making his big pitch because he knows that he has to be leader before Brexit, otherwise it's all over for him. Do you think this is because there is a gap in perception between the sort of Westminster obsessives, the Westminster bubble, the people who laughed at all Boris Johnson, jokes and people out there who look worriedly about the future and maybe think that Theresa May is a better bet. I think there's some of that. There's certainly some suggestion that there's some sympathy for Theresa May and there's some interesting uh, bits of the polling which talk about how uh, the public would like her to go back to Brussels and say no we've had enough and they see her as the strongest person to do that. But there's also something hiding beneath this polling which shows that actually the Prime Minister's domestic agenda is going to be a really big problem for her because while people think that she would be the best leader on Brexit, that doesn't necessarily ring true when it comes to other domestic issues. And if you look at what the most important things to people are, Brexit comes third below the NHS and the cost of living crisis. And Lord Ashcroft in this polling is saying that the Tories have isolated quite a lot of the people that they would need to vote for them in another general election, which would make that problematic for her to win a big majority. And of course, Polly Toynbee, um, she's coming to the conference with at least one policy which looks slightly Corbynish, the idea of taxing the, the, the richest in the uh, foreign people coming into this country who of course don't vote, a bit higher, two or three percent extra on stamp duty and using the money to deal with rough sleeping. Okay. Yes, there are things that reflect it. But what's interesting here is Steve Baker, former Brexit minister, used to be uh, regarded as one of the more sensibles of the far uh, Brexiteers, has now, to use 
Boris's word, apparently deranged, taking on the CBI. Just here, it's just an astonishing article. Just read us out a little bit yes, of the second paragraph. I'll read you a bit of what he says. He says, uh, the devastation wrought by the Confederation of British Industries' excessive political influence. And then he says, uh, it's a CBI is a grave menace to the political stability and economic prospects of the UK. I have never is, heard of a former min Tory minister attack the CBI like that. What do you make of this? Well, it's Tom? the same, of course, of Boris, Boris going F business, if you remember, and it's a disastrous tactic. I suspect it means that the hard Brexiteers are losing the plot and a bit scared. Well, Brexiteers don't like the CBI for a couple of reasons. One, the CBI said, let's keep us in a customs union. And two, that they don't like the Canada, Super Canada, whatever we're calling it. So um, they're not their biggest fan. Ha having said that, it, I think there is a degree of loss of control here about Brexiteers. And actually, there's a wider argument that, that Brexiteers lost control of Brexit some while ago. OK, the other big announcement that's out today is a, a new Festival of Britain after Brexit to cheer us all up. Are we excited <laughs> about the Festival of Britain? We're terribly excited. So this is one of the announcements that Number 10 had planned to go into the Sunday papers. And, of course, they, they plan a couple of these, uh, which they hope will lead the front pages on the morning of conference. And as we've seen, haven't necessarily. But it, I think what this article shows particularly is that Theresa May is really lacking a decent domestic policy agenda. And as Tom was saying before, that's the one thing that most of the Conservative Party agree that they need in order to move on from Brexit and if this is the best so this is to cheer us up all with. up after Brexit and make us feel proud about being British <laughs> after Brexit it sounds a little bit like compulsory smiling after <laughs> Brexit <laughs> but also it's it does sound slightly Tom slightly anti-conservative I remember Winston Churchill described the original Festival of Britain as three-dimensional socialist propaganda <laughs> <laughs> well I think um, I don't know whether it sounded conservative let's see I'm sure you'll love it when you go there and well uh, might <laughs> learn the lesson from the Millennium and well, later yeah, walking into deep trouble but, that, that that you know their great millennium o2 thing was an absolute catastrophe but what, co but what conservatism is is changing of course and and there is a debate within the party about whether you go for free complete free marketeerism or whether you have a sort of slightly theresa may not believing in untrammeled free markets uh, and yeah. and showing the sort of okay. the um, the sharing let's society. return to the big issue of the week i think close observers polly may have deduced that you're not an unqualified enthusiast <laughs> for brexit <laughs> But you've got a story no, indeed. The and here's a good reason why. Here we are um, in the Observer. These are all the official, drawn from all the official figures. Britain's bill for Brexit hits 500 million. Do you remember Boris's 350 million a week on on the his bus? It's now 500 million a week. The we are way. losing. Everybody is losing through the fact that the pound has dropped by 12 percent, but also through the two and a half percent growth that we are missing that we would have had had we been on the same trajectory before the vote. Everything that they have promised uh, turns out to be absolutely wrong and it's happening now this isn't just a projection of what will or might happen after brexit this is what's going on now and that's why everybody's so out of pocket tom the other big story in this morning's papers is this security breach yes. can you first of all explain to people watching exactly what we think happened well um, um so there is an app designed for the conservative party conference which anybody can download to experience the fun uh, and um, there seems to be a problem with it in that the moment that you register for it, you can gain access to pretty much anybody's details. So cabinet ministers have had their mobile phone numbers pinched uh, and their, potentially their addresses as well. So that has caused a fair deal of embarrassment. It does mean that a few cabinet ministers are probably going to have to change their, their mobile phone and numbers. And some journalists too. And <laughs> even worse. And, and journalists are going to lose half their contacts book, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, but it is, it's, not, it's, it's not a great start. Um, wasn't there meant to be a speech done by Holly? Which well, I, think there was, I think there was meant to be a speech today. I think Brandon Lewis was meant to hail this app as, as a sign that the Tory party is moving <laughs> on and attracting younger voters in, in rival to kind of Labour's momentum movement. I think one of the things that came out of Labour's conference was actually that they'd managed to organise themselves quite well and had quite a lot of support from young people. There was the kind of side fringes going on and that's what the Conservatives want to replicate. So this story on the front page of the Telegraph today is not good news for them. It's embarrassing. Now we always try and get a genial sense of compromise on this programme and Polly <laughs> Toynbee has found something in the Mail on Sunday she really agrees with. I like page. the Mail. You were rather rude about it.
that made on Sunday's front page. I thought it was very good <laughs> they went on parks, uh, selling off our green spaces, case after case where parks, playgrounds are being shut, closed down because councils can't afford to keep them going. Of course, the mail doesn't say that. The real reason is that they've had a 50% cut, councils on, on average, in their grant from government, and they are absolutely up against it. So you get potholes, you get things people are starting to notice. May not, may not notice social care unless you've got an elderly relative or a child in care and the, the real squeeze on them, people do notice these public things. So this is what the Tories should really be thinking about. What sort of things are they being sold off for? Does it tell us? Well, they're being sold off for use for outside commercial activities, but mostly shut down because they haven't got the money to keep them going. And some for housing, oh. more and yes, new new homes, mm -hmm. blighting the land. Parks are so important, our green lungs. Mm. Okay. Now, Kate McCann, we're here in Birmingham because the Tories are here in Birmingham, but out there in the wider world, there's some much more important stories we shouldn't yes. ignore, including this awful, awful Indonesian tsunami and earthquake. Yeah, and some of the pictures coming out uh, from Indonesia are, are truly awful. Um, I think the death toll's risen and probably likely to rise again uh, today, and there is some concern about uh, villages which have been cut off by the tsunami wave that we haven't still reached, rescuers still need to get to, yeah. and a lot of concern for the loss of life and, of course, how to rebuild these areas. And these are relatively flimsily built communities right on the sea's edge which have just been kind of wiped away. Yeah and a number of yeah. people had gathered uh, in, in a number of these communities for festivals on the beach which uh, was awful awful timing because of course it meant that whole communities, children were, were on, a, on the beach at, at a festival when the tsunami wave hit. Now it may be that people watching this programme are looking for something to cheer themselves mm -hmm. up why with. Would, why and not? the Ryder Cup <laughs> the Ryder is Cup. By, by far the easiest way to do that. So we, have, uh, we are midway through the Ryder Cup. Uh, we have a young um, British golfer, Tommy Fleetwood, who is taking the thing by storm. Uh, we, have the, we have Europe that are up at the moment against the US. The singles matches start a little bit later this morning, though fortunately after your interview with the Prime Minister. So I can imagine, Andrew, all these golfers lined up round a TV. Waiting, I'm sure that's, the, to go. But I'm it's, sure that's uh, the case. It's but a it's a long time news. since Europe has had a team like this, isn't it? Yes, and also um, a long time since uh, America have won in in Europe and also to res wrestle that Ryder Cup back from the US uh, doesn't seem all that far away given we only need four and a half more points. Well listen, thanks to all of you, we've covered a huge amount of time, uh, a small amount of time, a huge amount of area <laughs> in a small amount of time. Thanks very much indeed. And so